Hello, teaching veteran Trey Reedley here, and welcome to Band Stuff. This is part two of a series titled Developing a Winning Team Chemistry with Your Band Staff. In my last video, I talked about what assistants want the head director to know that sometimes is hard or impossible to say. And it was my hope that head directors would watch this to kind of get an idea more of what their assistants might be thinking. Well, I think turnabout is fair play. So today I'm going to be talking about what head directors want their assistants to know. Now you, if you're an assistant, you know, you might have a head director that expresses everything uh, that he believes and how he thinks that you're doing. And that could be good and could be bad. I think overall it would be good because maybe things are uh, clarified. But I can tell you there are many situations where head directors are very, very frustrated because they kind of expect uh, an assistant to just know to do certain things. And a lot of directors have a tendency to, and I'm speaking of head directors here, might have a tendency to kind of hold things in. Or they tell you once, and then after that they just get frustrated because they don't want to have to tell you something again. And so I think there's a lot of times there's a real tendency for the head director to hold things in for a long, long time and things kind of build and sometimes the end can kind of be uh, disastrous. And so today I'm going to try to give you an idea of what head directors want. And maybe you can do some of these things without them actually having to tell you and there being any kind of uh, a flare up all of a sudden because of things bubbling underneath the surface and then finally exploding. So what I'm going to do is kind of like I did in the last video. I'm actually, in the last video, I took the role of an assistant director speaking to the head director. And now I'm going to kind of play the role of a head director just talking to an assistant director. So here we go. Well, I appreciate you meeting with me here today. And I just want to make sure that you understand all of the expectations that I have for you as an assistant. Because I think some of these things will help our relationship be a good one and we can work together. Uh, as a very strong team. First of all, I really like it when you ask me questions. Uh, it shows a real desire to learn on your part and it gives me a chance to share my uh, experiences with you. And the, the thing that's really important about you asking questions and not feeling like you've got to act like that you know everything is it gives it opens up this conversation where I can make suggestions to you. And believe it or not, it's kind of difficult for me sometimes just to come up and keep offering unsolicited advice all the time because I don't know if you really uh, resent the advice that I give you, if you want me to give you advice or not. So you can kind of eliminate that situation by being someone that is very open to advice and you show that by asking my opinion on a lot of things and how I would do certain things. And I really need you to show respect for my experience. You know, even though you're an assistant and it seems very close to the head position, you know, and you do a lot of the same things that I do, I can tell you, although those, the two positions, assistant and head director, might seem kind of close, there's a lot more difference there uh, than you can possibly imagine. And there's a big difference of being the head director and assistant just in the sense of the responsibility that I have as a head director and how whatever comes down the pike you know, I'm going to be the first one that comes to, and I'm going to want have, be the one that has to take care of so many issues that you never have to deal with. And I can't really expect you to understand that until you're the head director. But I can tell you, I've talked to a lot of guys that were assistants, that they were just stunned about that seemingly small move over to head director was really a very, very big move in reality. And as an assistant, there's going to be some things that we do that you're just not going to be able to do things the way that you prefer doing them. And frankly, and I don't mean this in a mean way, but there are just things you're going to have to, you know, write down or whatever, or make a mental note of that you're going to be doing differently when you're the head director. But when you're not the head director, there's going to be some things maybe you would like to do that it's just not going to be done that way. And particularly if you're new and young assistant coming into a very established program, um, you just can't come in and, and change everything at once. There's some things that you're just going to have to uh, do 
because you're in the assistant position. And another thing that's very important to me is that you take initiative. Be aware, look for things that need to be done and do them. Now, there is a little bit of danger in taking initiative. And one thing I'd like to ask you to do is that when you're going to take initiative, check with me sometimes and just let me know what you're doing or what you want to do. Because there might be times when I can say, point out a pitfall in what you're doing and give you some suggestions on what to kind of watch out for. Because some of the things that you're doing, we need to be on the same page, whether it's disciplinary matters, whether it's uh, grading procedures, there's all sorts of different things that you can take initiative on, but just make sure I know what's going on, not because I'm a micromanager, but I am head of the program and I need to know what's going on in case somebody asks me. And also to make sure that you and I are very consistent in what you're doing with the kids you have charge of and what I'm doing with the kids uh, that I'm charged with. And also when it comes to taking an initiative, I need to be very, very proactive in every rehearsal we have, where it's marching band, whether it's concert band, you know, if I haven't given you something to do, find something to do that will contribute to the success of that rehearsal. And what if you do, get off of your smartphone. And because that, that really will drive me crazy when you're on your phone the whole time, when there's a, hundreds of other things that you could be doing to help us in that rehearsal. And another thing, don't get too buddy-buddy with the students. You know, I'm old enough to be their father, you know, maybe even their grandfather, I don't know. You're more like an older brother or sister or a sibling. And it's gonna be real easy for you as a young assistant to try too much to be their friend. And you have got to draw your boundaries very, very firmly, very clearly from the beginning. You shouldn't be texting back and forth with students unless it's very, very brief and it's pure business about when a rehearsal is or something like that don't a lot of times they're going to want to hang out in your office all day long before class after class after school before school sometimes even before rehearsal and you need to be hurting them out of there to get where they need to be the last thing i want to do is have kids late to my rehearsal because they're hanging out with you in your office so keep that professional boundary there theoretically if you're working hard enough, you don't have a tremendous amount of time just to kind of hang out with high school kids. And so uh, that's really important to me that you keep that line firm between you being a professional and them being a student. And also, don't count on me to be the heavy in all of the discipline issues that, that you encounter in your classroom. You need to have a firm discipline plan that you've gone over with me and that we have it somewhat aligned, we have the same philosophy about. But once we put it in, you have got to follow that. Because it really hurts me in recruiting and getting kids in high school band if I'm coming into your rehearsals and they're behaving very, very badly and I'm having to do all the disciplining and getting on to them and all they, that's all they see of the high school director. And of course, when I'm getting on to them all the time and pulling them out and doing this in terms of taking care of discipline, I become the mean guy. It's like, he's mean, I don't want to be in his band. So I want to be able to come into your rehearsals and be almost like a cheerleader and Mr. You know, the happy old man kind of guy that everybody wants to be in his band. And I can't do that if I'm having to make up for your deficiencies in keeping that band in an orderly fashion. When I give you some testing and music playoff responsibilities, maintain very, very high standards, maintain high expectations for them. Don't take it easy on them because we're really trying to get these kids playing level up to substantially from year to year and to be able to see a lot of improvement as they move through our program. I'll go ahead and tell you right now, there are going to be times when our work schedule is going to be crazy and it's going to basically seem like we're living up here. And uh, trust me, I'm going to try to be as balanced as I can, but there's just really no way to have an outstanding band program without certain times of the year just being very, very difficult and very, very time consuming. And so just trust me when I say that I'm trying to help keep things balanced. I want things to be balanced for your life and for mine, but there's going to just be times 
when there's no me time. It's going to be all about the students uh, and their time. You know, so get get ready to work hard, and uh, because our main thing in our mind is these students and helping them to succeed. And sometimes that goes way beyond just normal working hours. Also, it's very important for me that you be punctual. Be on time to everything. Because it's, it's very difficult for me when I'm on time, particularly if it's one of your events, and your kids show up and they're asking me all sorts of questions I shouldn't have to answer because I'm not their director. You're the director and you should be there to answer it. And when it's one of my groups, I need you to be there not only on time, but when you get there, get to work. Don't be kind of chatting up the kids and talking and take it easy. Let's get down to business and get things accomplished. And finally, I will be the happiest head band director in the world if the last thing that I hear you say every day is, is there anything else you would like me to do before I go? I know that seems like a scary question, but I promise you most of the time is the answer is going to be no. And I can tell you honestly that most of the time the answer is going to be no. I don't have anything else, but I can't tell you how much I'll still appreciate that question.